Good morning, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Francesco. And uh, I find that this is a really amazing meeting. And uh, my lecture will focus attention on the spherical aberration and uh, the effects on visual acuity, con contrast sensitivity, and the pop focus when we talk about multifocal IOL. So when we talk about spherical aberration, that we, ha we have to know that it's a high order aberration that describes the presence of a concentric gradient of power between the center and the periphery of the pupil. So we need to talk about a gradient. So the larger the pupil, the larger the amount of the measured spherical aberration that we have. So in most human eyes, look at an infinity, the measured spherical aberration is slightly positive. This means that when we delay the pupil, we have a slight myopic shift in our patient and the age of the pupil itself. And we have to focus attention that we can have positive spherical aberration in which the paraxial, that means the central rays, focus posteriorly with respect to the paracentral rays. And we can have the negative spherical aberration, which it happens just the opposite. The paraxial rays focus anteriorly with respect to the paracentral rays. And this is the result in most cases quite different from what we can have in a perfect uh, system in which we have a precise focus. So, the spherical aberration can be defined as the useful aberration in the context of presbyopia correction. And manipulating spherical aberration can induce a kind of multifocality, increasing the type of focus and increasing the possibility to get focus of images coming from far and from near. When we talk about spherical aberration, we also have to describe the shape of cornea and we use the Q value, that's aspericity. There's a factor that tells us how much and how the cornea is flattened in the periphery respect to the center. So when we have a normal aspheric cornea, we have a Q factor that's between minus 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.45. When we have a Q value of zero, we are dealing with a completely spherical cornea. A Q greater than zero means that we have a prolate cornea that happens after myopic refractive surgery. Otherwise, a hyperopic prolate cornea is considered to have a Q factor lower than minus 0 0.6. And this is how can we represent a normal cornea in which we can enlighten the values here after myopic refractive surgery and after hyperopic refractive surgery. As you can see here, we have a different optical zone and different corneal shape that can produce different Q factors. Let's go ahead. So this is the Zernical polynomials. We already talked about them and we know that the zeta Z40 is the symbol that describes the spherical aberration. C40 is the coefficient that describes the value that's um, expressed in micron units and is referred to a specific pupil diameter. So the, the most important thing that we have to take into account is that the Z40 uh, is related to the four power of the radial distance to the center of the pupil. And this is able to modify significantly the refraction of the patients. So when a refractive power, that's divergence, is higher at the pupil center, respect to the periphery, we have a negative spherical aberration. Conversely, when the refractive power is lower at the pupil center, we have a positive spherical aberration. But when we talk about, about spherical aberration, we have to talk about also the longitudinal and the transverse spherical aberration. The LSA is the distance along the optical axis between the different ray intersection points as a measure of the amount of spherical surface. Otherwise, the transverse is the lateral extent of rays that intersect the paraxial image plane. So, this is very important, if the aperture stop to the system is reduced, so the rays furthest from the optical axis are blocked, then the LSA is so smaller, so we interact only with the central part of the cornea or central part of the optical axis. So reducing the pupillary diameter, only the paraxial, that means the central rays are involved, blocking the peripheral one. 
So the plane of best image is then formed only with the rays reaching the cornea and reaching the, 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 the retina, sorry. So when we have a positive spherical aberration, um, we have the lower vergence in the center of the cornea. Otherwise, when we have a negative spherical aberration, we have a myopic shift because only the central part of the cornea that has a higher power is involved in the optical system. And so playing with the spherical aberration, we can induce multifocality. So we can increase the amount of spherical aberration and we can play with Z, uh, zeta 40 and also zeta 60 to manipulate the uh, longitudinal spherical aberration and increase the depth of focus. So it's common, to, uh, it's common that a negative spherical aberration is able to induce a negative myopic defocus at the center of the pupil and reducing this myopic defocus toward the periphery. And this is what happens when we perform an hyperopic refractive surgery or when we perform a hyperprolate cornea uh, by using a different shape of Q-value for the cornea itself. And according to the previous image, this is how spherical aberration and longitudinal spherical aberration that you can see here modifies when we have a four millimeter uh, pupil diameter. But let's see what happens when we increase the uh, diameter of analysis. This is six millimeter pupil, and this is seven millimeter pupil. So you can see here that we increase the LSA value and it becomes higher and higher when we uh, include peripheral rays. So remember that the spherical aberration is a gradient between the central and the periphery. So the central pupil zone power, when, what would mean when we talk about um, paraxial rays on peripheral rays? The central pupil power is uh, an optical zone that refers to the 1.5 millimeter radius central on the corneal vertex. Uh, otherwise, when we talk about the paracentral power, it's a, a, an annular concentric surrounding area that stay over this, sorry, is an annular, uh, oh, does work, <laughs> okay, is an annular peripheral area that stay over these 1.5 millimeters. So why the spherical aberration so is so useful for uh, multifocal correction? Uh, we can manipulate it also uh, creating a new shape of IOLs. For example, this is an impress, uh, an OIA Vivinex, uh, Vivinex impress IOL in which we have a central uh, hyperprolate area. So we have a, a, a central myopic defocus error at the pupil center and we have a paracentral zone in which we have an, um, a metropic refractive error. So when we focus attention and we be uh, aiming at reading with uh, the, the pupil constriction, we include only the central area of the, of the optical zone and so we can obtain a negative, um, a negative refractive error, just the patient can be able to read. So when the pupil delays, we increase the, uh, the, 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 the area involved in the pupil and so we increase the, the, the far distance vision. Uh, here, uh, I try to describe in a paper published in 2009 what is the, uh, the effects of spherical aberration on visual acuity at different uh, contrast. And as you can see here, all the aberration, when all the aberration were corrected, contrast visual uh, acuity is decreased by 7%, 36.8, and 53.5 after induction of positive spherical aberration. And this is what, is what happens when we induce a negative spherical aberration. If we compare the results, the positive spherical aberration on visual acuity was less, uh, was less effective respect to the negative spherical aberration. And this is, was true for high and low contrast condition. But the visual acuity does not increase when we only correct the spherical aberration, otherwise it increases when we correct the high order aberrations and uh, so it is not so important for the complexity of visual acuity. So when we have accommodation during near vision, we have a pupil constriction. As I said before, we can focus the image on the central near reading zone. 
When we delay the pupil, the reduced divergence uh, at the pericentral zone allows to achieve a better and correct visual acuity for distance. And it's important to know that the negative spherical aberration must be accompanied with a selective central pupil myopia that's able to give us the multifocality of the eye. And this is how the lens is, the shape of the lens, and is how it works. Okay. Uh, this is the same lens I told you before, the OIA geometric, uh, the OIA Vivin X Impress. Um, this is the ATDRS chart, and uh, this is how the lens works. This is the refractive error. And these are the defocus curve. So this is what happens with this kind of lens when we have more than four millimeters pupil diameter. And this is what happens when we reduce the area of uh, analysis. So this is three millimeters pupil diameter. And this is 2.5 millimeters diameter. And you can see here how the uh, visual acuity improves and the defocus curves um, enhance in, uh, in the near vision. And this is the comparison between the EDOF mono EDOF lens with the same monofocal lens. As you can see, we have a different shape of the defocus obtained with the software made by Francesco. This is another lens which uses uh, multifocality and spherical aberration to induce multifocality itself. And uh, there is a combination between positive and negative spherical aberration that's able to increase the LSA just to increase the multifocality. The same does the Bauchelon Look Smart, who plays with a four grade and six grade spherical aberration of uh, opposite signs just to increase the depth of focus. And this is the J and J uh, Ayans monoid of lens. This is how the lens works. This is the refractive error, like we can see. And this is what happens when we uh, move from three millimeter to two point five millimeter. As you can see here, we have different shape of the of the defocus curve with an enhancement in the myopic shift. This is the brand new J&J um, Pure C lens. This is how the lens works. This is the refractive error. And these are the defocus curves. As you can see, when we reduce the, pu the pupil and when we reduce the analysis, the, the area of analysis, we have an in improvement of the defocus for the near vision. And this is the same lens implanted in a patient who has had a hyperopic refractive surgery so the two, uh, the two procedures have been combined together. You can see here the divergence at the center of the optical area. And this is how the lens works. So let's see what happens when we reduce the pupil diameter and we have an improvement of near vision. And we move and we have a very... One second. Showing this is going to break a lot of brains now. <laughs> Give me a second. Have you confirmed this? With a man, we perform the focus curve. Yes. And does it fit? Yes. So right now you're saying that, and this looks like a pretty high hydrophobic ablation plus four. Yes. That a J and J negative aspericity lens in a post hyperopic patient is it's able well. to fit well. Yeah. This is a huge paradigm change because before, would I had if you had done this, you would have taken that lens out. Yes, we, we did this patient last week. This is a very new introduction, okay. and the patient was more than, more than happy. Okay, because have you tried hyperopic lasing with eye hands mix? Uh, without, yes. And are they happy with eye hands and hyperopia before? You say you implanted a J&J without yeah. hyperopic? No, yes. no. We implanted some people with J&J lens as opposed to hyperopic lasing and they could not tolerate the, the fight between the spherical operation of the lens and the spherical operation of the point. They you think that they do not, do not match? No. They we had very good results. It's a very, very less than new patients. They are really, really very happy. Okay. That's a, 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 a recent patient that we did la, la, last week. It works. The patient was very happy. I will tell you. And this is the real hyperprolate natural multifocal lens. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.